Hey everyone, welcome to the 10th episode of how to create your own first person shooter single player game. In this episode, we are going to rebake the nav mesh from the level design episode and spawn more enemies when reaching a certain area in the stage. The level design episode is optional, but I have upgraded the Unity version in that episode, which helps with the lag when playtesting or even building the game. This is explained in the level design episode, so just make sure to watch it. Link is in the description down below. If you want to follow along with this series, check out the card that displays at the top right for the playlist. I would appreciate if you can comment down below to let me know what other type of tutorials you would love to see in the channel as I would like to expand my content more or even comment what you like in this video or what I could take into consideration. So first thing to do once we are inside of Unity is to select all the floor objects. Select one in the scene and then select them all in the hierarchy and make sure to check them as static in the inspector. Then let us go to Window, AI, Navigation and inside of the Navigation tab go to Object. Now we can make sure the object is walkable or not. In this case the floor needs to be walkable. Select all the walls and set them as static and not walkable. Then select all the props, tick static and not walkable. Also make sure to select all the containers and change them to static as well and not walkable. Now that we have changed all the game objects in the scene, now let us rebake the scene with a new nav mesh. If your nav mesh did not show like mine, in the scene view just make sure your gizmos is enabled. At the moment we can see that some containers does not have the nav mesh included. This will mean that the AI won't be able to follow us through these areas. To fix these areas, we will have to have base objects on the floor of these objects to allow baking to happen on the chosen mesh. If we make some of these containers walkable, then it will allow the AI to run through the objects. So for now, we won't be touching the containers and they will be our safe haven. Now the AI will be able to chase us through the scene. Now that we have movement sorted for AI, the first thing that we want to do is reposition the current enemy. Let us go back to the inspector tab to stop seeing the nav mesh. We also want more enemies to spawn once we have run over a certain area. Inside of the hierarchy, create a new 3D object cube and position it in one of the areas where we would like the trigger to happen. If the player passes this area, we just want more units to spawn at a spawn position. Make sure to scale the cube big enough to cover the whole walking area and then rename the cube to spawn trigger. Create a new empty game object and rename this to spawn triggers. Make sure the new game object is all zeroed out in all of its positions and drag and drop the spawn trigger game object inside of this newly created game object just to have the hierarchy clean. With the spawn trigger selected, make sure the box collider is a trigger. This will allow the player to walk through the collider instead of just bumping into it. We can take this trigger area and make it a prefab and create a new c -sharp script inside of the scripts folder and call it spawn trigger. Select the spawn trigger prefab and drag and drop this newly created script inside of the inspector to attach it. We also want to create a new empty game object and rename this to enemy spawn point. Drag this a bit further away from the spawn trigger and once you are happy with the position, create another empty game object and call it enemy spawn points. Reset the transform and drag in the spawn point inside of this game object. Now we can open up the spawn trigger script. Once the script is open, delete the start and update method. We will then add two references in the script. Right at the top, serialize field, game object and call it enemy prefab. To hold the prefab, we will spawn at the enemy spawn point. Then write serialize field transform and call it enemy spawn point. Now that we have these two references, we can now write private void on trigger enter collider and other. And then inside of this on trigger enter, we will check if other dot compare tag is player. Then we are going to instantiate the enemy prefab at the enemy spawn point dot position and quaternion dot identity to keep the prefab at its current rotation. 
If we go back into Unity, we can now select the spawn trigger inside of the prefabs and drag and drop the enemy prefab inside of the enemy prefabs reference and then select the spawn trigger inside of the hierarchy and drag and drop the enemy spawn point inside of the reference. While we have the spawn trigger selected, disable the mesh renderer component to hide the cube visual. Select the enemy prefab and change the detect range to 30 just so that the enemies can quickly start chasing you upon spawning inside of the scene and if they are facing you. Make sure you are in play focused mode in the game view and that gizmos is switched on and that you are selected on the spawn trigger to be able to see the collider in the game view. Just for now we will also make sure to disable the 3D icons do not see the camera icon in our face. Hit play to test the trigger script. Run towards the cube trigger and now you can see once we run over it, a new enemy spawns at the position we specified. And this is how quickly and easily it is to implement new enemies inside of your game. Thanks for watching. If you haven't already, join the Discord channel. Please come share how your project looks and share your experience with this project. Check out all the links down below for all of the information. Source code link is also down below as well as the full Git project. Remember about the comment down below with what you would like to see next. Keep well and see you in the next episode. Cheers.